Hi everyone. Let's take a look at the following example. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. It's a regular octagon with sides of unit length. Let vector A, B equal to vector A and vector A, H equal to vector B. Proof that vector B, C equals to vector B plus the square root of two times vector A. Step number one, from the given, vector AB equals to vector A. So you can draw this vector and name it vector A. Likewise, if you think about this second part, vector AH equals to vector B. So you can draw a vector, vector B. Now, if you reread the first sentence, regular octagon, sides of unit length. This means throughout this entire octagon, the magnitude of each side is going to be one. Something that you want to think about, which will help you in a moment. The moment is here. When you draw this line going across, notice how it's a regular octagon with unit length for each side. So if you break this apart, you can draw these lines going down, which will make a 90 degree angle. This is going to be one. Again, because each side has a magnitude of one. Now, if you zoom in to one of these triangles, so for example, if you think about this triangle right here, this hypotenuse has a length of one. Because it's a regular octagon, this angle is going to be 45 degrees. This angle is going to be 45 degrees as well. Think about the special triangle, which would have been one, one, and root two. So think about the two special triangles. This is what I call special triangle number two. And instead of having the hypotenuse to be root two, it's going to be one. This means you can divide each side by root two. Now, this means this number is going to be one divided by root two. So I go back and I write down one divided by root two. And likewise, this is going to be one divided by root two. Now, here's how we prove the following. Write down RTP, that stands for required proof. Vector BC equals to B or vector B plus root two vector A. Now, if I start with the left-hand side, that's going to be vector BC. And if you keep going, think about vector BC. That's the same as B, A, vector BA, plus vector A, H, plus vector HC. So again, I'll say this one more time. I'm going to erase some of this so you can see what I'm doing here. Now, if I erase some of this, hopefully you can still see the major concepts that I'm trying to show you here. I'm saying BA plus AH plus HC, which is basically BA plus AH plus HC, this equals to BC. So again, that dual mindset, right? Graphically can see why this makes sense. Algebraically, again, A and A are the same, H and H are the same. Take the beginning and the end, that's going to give you vector BC. So let me put all that back. Now, what does this really mean in terms of the given? If you go back to vector BA, that is also equal to negative vector A. Again, remember, in the given, vector AB equals to A. So vector BA, which is the opposite vector, will give you negative A. Now, if you look at the second piece, AH, vector AH is given to be vector B. So you're going to add vector B. But here's the part you want to think about. If you think about the total distance, the magnitude of the bottom, that's 1 plus 1 over root 2 plus 1 over root 2. And again, you can work this out. There's a common denominator of root 2. In fact, you can rewrite 1 
as root two divided by root two plus one divided by root two plus one divided by root two. So if you clean this up a little bit, and I'll put it right here, of course, that's going to be in brackets root two plus two divided by the common denominator root two times vector a. Again, it's a regular octagon. So this vector ab, it's parallel to vector hc. This is only true because it's a regular octagon with side lengths of one. Everything has all these properties associated with. So again, what happens is if you clean up the left-hand side, this equals to, let's zoom in for you so you can see all the steps. Again, this is called the optical illusion. I'm zooming in to make it look simpler, but it's really just I'm zooming in. Now I'm going to copy B just like that, and I'm going to combine them. So if you think about this, I'm adding root 2 plus 2 divided by root 2. Remember, I'm subtracting A, so I'm subtracting a 1 here, and I put this in brackets times vector A. Now, don't forget 1 is the same as 1 divided by 1. I can multiply this by the common denominator of root 2. So when I combine this, the left-hand side equals to B plus, again, I put this in brackets. Let me move it up a little bit. The common denominator is going to be root 2. This is going to be root 2 plus 2 minus root 2. And again, if I collect like terms, first of all, cross out root 2 minus root 2. That's going to be 0. And I'm left with 2 divided by root 2. Now, we don't want to make sure everybody see the following steps. This is going to be vector b plus 2 divided by root 2 times vector a. Now, you can multiply the top and the bottom by root 2. Effectively, you're multiplying it by 1. You're not changing the actual value. And look what happens. The left-hand side equals to vector b plus, again, if you look at the bottom here, root 2 times root 2 is 2, and 2 divided by 2 is going to be 1. So the left-hand side equals to vector b plus root 2 times vector a, which is exactly the same as the left-hand side. I hope this makes sense.